Well, it's our favourite time of the week yet again. The podcast record, Old Bull Young Buck. My name's yeah. David Mundy. Thank Hi, you, everybody, for watching and listening with us. We feel like we have a growing momentum in this space and we're really enjoying it. With me, as ever, is my little fella, Griffin Logue. How are you, Little mate? fella, generous again. It's very nice of you, mate. But I'll let you, I'll let you go today because it is a big day on the calendar. Mate, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, mate. What are you? 36, 36. again, yeah. 36, yeah. It's good. It's nice. Yeah. So you're closer to 40 than you are 32, but... Yep. Officially today, so you got you got that in the back of your mind. So. Yeah, it's my special day, mate. So I hope you'd be very nice to me today. Thirty six is is pretty good. It's a, it's a good number. Thank you. So how do you feel? Do you feel you feel strong? Yeah, feeling good. Strong as an ox, yeah. Re ready to go. Yeah, no, we had a run around in the rain this morning, so that was nice. It was nice actually. Yeah. It was a good change up. It wasn't well. It's been a bit gloomy the last couple of days anyway, but I don't mind training in the rain. Yeah, you're a, good, you're a wet weather player. Yeah. yeah, well, I grew up in big country, mate, so I'm used to it. I've had a, used, used had to the some cold. experience. Used yeah. to the cold. Anyway, uh, last week. Tom Sheridan? Yeah, Tommy was great, wasn't What'd he? What did you think? Well, I felt like we just sat him down in front of a microphone and sat here for an hour. And it's pretty easy. It's so. pretty. It's, it's pretty easy just to can't really shut him up normally. So <clears throat> he loves a chat and he's a good storyteller. So you can sell sell ice to an Eskimo that man. <laughs> he tell you what, <laughs> he he can, seriously, he can you choose, choose your ear off a bit. So absolutely, the story about him and Tabs getting into a blue over FIFA and getting oh. the cops called on him was um, my absolute so favorite part. So the best of that is. the best part of that is that. Tabs has just no leg to stand on, and the amount of people that can come on here and just pay him out—he's just got nothing. But that—that is a—that is a funny story. So, yeah. anyway, it is also, as I said, your birthday. Um, speaking of Tommy, the man did deliver. Oh, um, hang on. Got—I'm wearing current blue lights here, but uh, not only just for you, Dave. I've also got a present for our lovely producer, Brett. Whoa, but Brett! Yours isn't wrapped. Oh, it's just fallen out. Hang on. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Yours isn't rap, Brett, because it's not your birthday. So there's yours. <laughs> and look at that! Like that's oh, as wow. that's as that's as good as it gets. So. Did you do that? No, mate. That's that's from, that's from Tom. Thank you for all the other listeners at home. Thank he you, has. Tom. He did whack up a discount code. He's whacked up another one. So discount code is Frio, and this is for the new blue lights. Um, get around them. We've used them. Dave's had a crack at them, and I tell you what, oh. make your eyes feel really nice. After long, I don't know the full science behind it, but they're meant to be the future, mate. So, <laughs> Sunny's for the future. So, I heard you explaining the blue lights to somebody this morning. Oh, I tried to explain. I've got, I've got, <laughs> I've got absolutely no idea. So, how do they look? They're nice, mate. Yeah. They look a bit, of, a bit of a Clark Kent mold for you, I reckon. Yeah, I'll try those. Must be good. Um, and of course, one of the best bits was Tom's rant, which we saw through social media, where he pretty much paid out belly for. Mm. Whatever it was, the future with Dave Muddy. How'd you how'd you find that Belly get into you? Or anyone anyone get get into you? Yeah, look, there was a few awkward hallway conversations with Belly, a few sideways glances, and wondering if I would teed Tommy up. I want to go on record and say that that was completely ad hoc. Tommy's you completely... definitely you definitely didn't team up, mate. We, no, we, no, no, no. Was... He teed us up with a few sunnies. So I'm just saying, could could have been, <laughs> could have gone either way. Well, he did mention uh, when we asked him to come on that he wanted five minutes with Peter. He for did obvious reasons. So um, yeah, we I thought we'd dissuaded him of that 100%. Uh, opinion but did you did you talk to belly like after clearly it? He, he took over yeah so um i'm not sure if it's on the back of tommy but we have a pod exclusive our first ever pod exclusive yeah. go on i'm listening uh i and the Fremantle football club have agreed to a contract extension for next year so one more year baby that's what i'm talking about the pods the pods <laughs> going on i don't care about you <laughs> Oh, here we go. Lucky I had this on, mate, because Monday 350. Have a go. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Must have been good news. Yeah, yeah. Stoked that we could get something Excited. done. Because I'm um, thrilled that I'm still playing well enough that the club want me, to oh, be well, Tom, and, Tom uh, mentioned 25.9 yeah. per game, so that probably helps. But And still loving what I'm doing here and playing with you guys and this pod with you, obviously. So, um, yeah, absolutely thrilled to be kicking on for another year. Oh, mate, thrilled for it. That's Thanks, awesome. Mate. That's so, it's so good. So, absolutely love to see it, mate. So, got me nice and excited. <laughs> Maybe I don't have to carry as much through the podcast, so you yeah. can get, get, get a bit better. But, um, no, nah, it's good, mate. E obviously, easy decision. Yeah. So, on the back of uh, last year, we had to wait. Sal and I had to wait a few months with uh, the list size and all that yep. kind of stuff. So there's a whole heap of uncertainty on the back of last year. So it's a whole whole year ago. Oh, yeah. Well, and so this year we, um, you know, we're pretty keen and the club are pretty keen and pretty um, flexible in terms of trying to at least have a discussion before we reached into the year. So yep. that you know, if either party didn't want to continue on, we we had a bit of time to plan. So um, yeah, the chats have kind of been 
happening for a little while and yeah, everyone's been happy with, you know, the contributions of both sides, myself yeah. and, and the footy club. So yeah, once once they were um, keen to, you know, sign me on again and have another year, it was yeah. pretty quick after that. So I had Andy, a few mate. chats with obviously my family and Sal and a few guys around here. I certainly don't want to feel like I'm an imposition or a burden or dampening anyone here. So other than me, but um, um, that's all right. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to hold your hand through this pod. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so once I'd had all those discussions and, um, yeah, well, I always felt pretty comfortable to that's continue great. on. So. That's great, mate. Yeah. I, I love it. So what is it now? That's eight, that'll be 19 years? Yeah, so draft at the end of 2013. Didn't play my first year. So football from AFL football from 2005. Yeah, right. Mm. It's, a big, it's a big, it's a long time. Did you ever want to go home or anything like, I, I never, I've never really asked you this, but I imagine... And you've been a pretty good player for a long time. I imagine there yep. would have been interest from other clubs, especially Mel Melbourne clubs. Did you ever kind of think about that? Yeah. So there's been a couple of instances where I've heavily considered going back. And yeah. it's always been around family. We've got a um, pretty big, tight-knit family back home. And it's hard to be so far away from them, particularly over the last two years. We haven't been able to get back. But um, yeah, so those discussions and, and thoughts that had come up a few times. Uh, two times in particular, I'd heavily considered it. Is that kind of how long ago? A couple of years? Oh, uh, so 2010, I reckon. And it was, yeah, it was actually real on the cards kind of. One. Yeah, it was, yeah. I I didn't, I certainly wasn't going to ignore the possibility and, yeah. and it would have been, um, well, I wanted to have a, a thorough kind of, it was part of my thorough thought process in yeah. terms of going through what I wanted in my life. And ultimately it came down to where I felt like I could play my best football and, and that's always been here, so. Everything else just kind of takes care of itself after that. Too loyal, aren't you? Well, too I feel loyal. like I am, yeah. 100%, mate. Wonderful. Brett wanted to kick you off this and I said, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, Go on, yeah. You revert back to me. <laughs> you get a bit nervous, mate. Go yeah. on, yeah, no, yeah. I'm with you, mate. Don't want the spotlight on, me, on you, but it's too bad, mate. Today's your day and it's my day. It's how I to get into you. So obviously we're in the Monday 350 shirt, but... Yeah, we've come up well. I mean, I'll finish off this year a few, you know, possibly a few games in September or whatever and yep. Monday 400 could be the goal at the end of end of next year just Would rolls you ever... off the tongue doesn't it sounds yeah, nice doesn't it Monday 350 just doesn't, doesn't <laughs> Monday 300 was good that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a real role that, that, that's great but did yeah. you ever think you know younger days as a undersized full back whatever you were as, as we got into each other about it um, you ever think 350 games would be on the cards for you Oh, well, that's, a lot, guess, that's a lot of games I guess as an undersized full back mate you, there's hope for you isn't there so, mate you got to think about how many games that is for everyone it's a lot, around yeah. that's so many and I'll turn on the corny cheese line really hard for just two seconds. But it goes quick. Um, I've lived my dream 349 times. You know, like as a Dead little set. boy coming yeah. through, I dreamed about playing AFL, taking hangers on Gary Ablett, playing next to Billy Brownless in my uh, front yard. Uh, and I've been able to do that 349 times, minus the hangers on Gary Ablett, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel very fortunate, and it's an incredibly long time, but it goes really quickly. I, I mean. Even within seasons goes quick. We've got five games to go of our regular season this mm. year and it feels like a blink of an eye. It does start, It so. does go through quick. I mean, I'm only fifth year and it feels like it's mm. just yesterday I've come into the club, but I can't imagine what it'd be like after 20 years or whatever it was. <laughs> just touching on the hangers, man. I reckon we wouldn't be able to slide a sheet of paper under your foot on a vertical wall. Oh, oh, can't, can't get off the ground. So, no, nah, it is, it's exciting stuff, mate. So I think you should go and Google that. I reckon I, I took a really nice one. Either on or very close to being on our current head coach, Justin Longmuir. Go and Google it. Well, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you would get your chance after 350 Half chances, mate. You're bound to have got one, surely. <laughs> so it's just a matter of the numbers. So anyway, um, we did. We got the job done for five 200. Yep. Um, will we do it again for this year, forever, Dave Mundy? Well, yeah, I hope so. I'll be doing my part. I hope you do yours. Yep, always. And always then will. we'll just need 21 others, I guess. Yeah. How are we feeling for the big milestones of it? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's probably not as exciting anymore. I mean, mm. 100. Do you remember your 100, 150, 200? Or is it just kind of at the end of the day as another cheesy one? It's just another game kind of thing? Or um, I don't know. So I don't remember my, my milestones very well. No. Up outside of the 200, uh, the 300, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> the book, the Doggies at Optus, which was a, an incredible week and an amazing night and a really great win. Um, but yeah, clearly playing in milestones, for other guys' milestones, it's. Um, I find I always find it a big deal. I always yeah. um, feel, and it was always hyped up by particularly Ross around playing, you know, to respect that guy and and all of that kind of stuff. So um, 
yeah, to play like we did for Nats 200th was really great. I think he's achieved a lot in his 200 and he's got a lot to go. So, um, yeah, if we can get anywhere near that, that'd be wonderful. Nah, it's good, mate. So, 350 games. It's actually... It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot. And there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of stats into it, oh, actually. So, on. you take a backward step, mate. I've got a few stats here. I'm, <laughs> Thanks, ta mate. I'm taking over as I <laughs> already have. So, um, David Mundy, as we saw with a recent Instagram post, The Moon Man. That mm. was, that's one that is just... Unbelievable. Yeah. So it's 860,000 kilometers, enough to get to the moon and back. Like that is, yeah. that's how many times that poor old Dave Money's been putting a bird. Do you, do you like flying? You, <laughs> Not never, really. Never had a problem with it or? Uh, Imagine poor old yeah. Desi Hedlund if he had to go that far. Yeah. He, he hates flying. Well, now we fly nowadays and it's, like, it's never nice, but it's a little bit more convenient with yeah. business class and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. A few little perks uh, associated with it. But I, ref I reflect back on my early days and yeah. we were just jammed up the back. No concessions, just one exit row. Yeah. And so all the big blokes were in there. So big so, blokes so in the leg room, so but huge shoulders. Not Dave. And not young David. No. Nah. So I remember a trip coming back from Melbourne where I was reading a book and I spent the entire flight like slouched down in my seat with my feet up against the headrest of the seat in front of me. The entire flight. Didn't get up once. Didn't get up. Didn't have tights on. Like, it was just a different world back then. And I was like 18 or 19, so recovery just bounced back. No yeah. worries. So, um, yeah, it certainly changed a lot. But, mm. yeah, I think the uh, most, well, the worst bit I find about flying is the uh, terminals at either end. Yeah, okay. Like, Actual train, there's time in transit. Yeah. Yeah. That's easy. Being that's on the plane's the fine because you can keep busy and yeah, you know, whatever. That's true. Have a chat, but. We don't really have a choice. So kind of on, on a plane. You, well, you do have a choice. You can do you can do a fair bit of stuff, kind of whether it's watch a movie, eat some food, yeah, talk some smack or whatever. But the terminal, yeah, I hate waiting for bags and stuff. And yeah, and we see how, how do you attack a flight now? Like, is it a obviously finish your study, so you can't. Yeah, you don't really have that excuse anymore. Where you can just not talk to us and worry about study. So, what are you doing? Oh, God. special guest, <laughs> hang on. Special guest, hang on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Sit down, Peter Bell. He's <laughs> <laughs> always late. How are we going? Here you go, <laughs> Dave. Beautiful chocolate oh cake that I baked earlier. Oh, today. thanks, mate. Um, yeah. I've, I've got a new hobby as well, which is um, cake decorating. You've so done a wonderful hopefully job, Hopefully you appreciate the work no, there. thank you. Something you prepared earlier, Thank well, you very 36, much. 36, and I got you a new Zimmer frame as well. <laughs> <laughs> as a birthday present. He's, no, got, he's got you there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, why, why are you here, Belly? Thanks for coming, mate. Hope hey, Griff. Hope it's a pleasure to be on the big, big fan of the pod. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm sure, yeah. What have you been up to? Every week. What have you been up to, mate? Other than slaving away back in the Well, the big news. Have you covered off the big news? We've covered the big news. Yes. Was it a no-brainer, mate? How would you... How'd you it, get to it? It was when you look at Dave's performance um, this year, performing at a really high level. Um, and look, negotiations um, are always a difficult thing to go through. And Tom Sheridan, um, <laughs> oh, mainly. Oh, we've mentioned him. Uh, Dave's manager in conjunction with Andy <laughs> McConville, of course. But uh, Tom was um, waging a pretty strong campaign on your behalf, Dave. Mm. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Um, we were given some insight last week. But, yeah, he yeah. was... He was pretty annoying. <laughs> I don't reckon, I don't re I don't reckon he's, he's yeah. told everyone about what is. Well, you know, let's the... look. I didn't realise that this was Tom's area of work specifically, and I'm I'm a little confused as to um, his role in Anthony's management <laughs> business. But anyhow, Tom seems to take up a lot of his negotiating and management work very late at night, <laughs> how late? or how quite, late? How late quite early in the morning, Griff, <laughs> as well. Um, so my wife uh, particularly was thrilled when uh, you'd receive ten to fifteen messages from Tom uh, <laughs> while he's working early in the morning. Um, saying sign Dave up, sign Dave. <laughs> no, that's an exaggeration. Two to, two to three, um, pretty I regularly. Have, but persistence be. pays off. So there's the moral, everybody. Persistence pays off, and uh, with Tom's encouragement, uh, we're thrilled. Yeah. On a serious note, course, that yeah. Dave will be playing on in uh, 2022 uh, at the ripe old age of 37. Although we've thrown the the birth certificate out out the window, 100%. and it's well deserved. Okay. And what we love most about Dave, which you would know. Griff is that he's like another coach for us mm. um, and the investment that he puts into um, his teammates and the club as well as his on-field performance means that we're thrilled to have him for at least another year. So well done. Amen. Thank you. And in, so, in, you're not allowed to eat that cake, by the way. That's strictly for else. the administrators yeah. and coaches. <laughs> you just get to look at it. Uh, it, looks, it looks great, mate. And appreciate the gesture. 
Yeah, thank you, mate. Oh, and I do. Thank you. Uh, and well done on the cake decorating. Yeah, no uh, I, I think I said it before, but I just want to be clear that I did not engage Tom in any meaningful employment <laughs> through yeah, that period he's, of he's, time. Been, he's been very, he's, <laughs> you're almost a bit too defensive there, David. Worried, so I'm not, not sure what you really have. But um, Belly, just to put you on the spot a bit, you played alongside Dave for a couple of years, obviously. And how'd you, how'd you boys have a good relationship or? Yeah, we not, had a, not, had not a, a great, good one. Or? No, had a great relationship, mm. and Dave came in. Well, this is well known, but came in as a fullback primarily, yeah. Undes- is, is what un- I remember. Undersized fullback, um, and an unnamed football identity at another club who was watching you play at Subiaco in your first year, yeah. um, who I share a pretty close relationship with, came up to me and said, oh, gee, that young Mundy's got a fair bit of work to go, hasn't he, <laughs> to do uh, before <laughs> before he's ready to make his mark on the AFL. And I said, oh, no, I, I really like him. I think he's going to I think he's gonna play 350 games. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, no, I, I think that he's going to be a really good player for our, our footy club. He played cross halfback back then is what I remember. Yeah, yep, yeah. that's where I made my mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, 350 games Worked later, way. here we are. Always, always had time. Um, had got that sort of languid sort of nature about you. But mm. um, yeah, look, it's been an amazing, amazing career um, with plenty more to come. Hopefully, 100. percent What was he? What was he like around the club? Early days was he kind of a bit? A very quite bit, shy, bit, bit spooky, and no, no, quite shy. Yeah. A very respectful. Um, when a few of us retired at the end of 2008, I remember Dave being interviewed afterwards and said, oh, it's good that some of the dead wood's gone. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that oh, interview? No, no, yeah. Yeah. Right. no, Bell- no Bell- 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 yeah, yeah. Neither, neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> some of the dead wood's gone. But uh, that was probably true. Well, well, you know, there was... Certainly there was, not referencing you. No, well, yeah. there was a lot of um, turnover that needed to take place at that, at that time. And um, But wood. yeah, look, I'll, I'll I'll I don't... I don't think anyone really thought early in Dave's career that it'd be 350. Mm. It'd be crazy to think to think that. But um, when you sit and contemplate and reflect, it's no surprise given the professionalism and um, that Dave approaches his his footy with. So really excited to be a small part of it. Yeah, how are you coping with the week? Uh, oh, today's so far been a week. Yeah. It's yeah, a big week. Yeah, yeah. You, look uh, a bit, you look a bit pale. Well, <laughs> well that's, that's probably right. because he has to do this podcast with you, Griff. Yeah, probably before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's been a huge day and um, these things still sit really uncomfortably with me, to be honest, mm-hmm. with individual um, limelight and um, you know, reflection. Uh, I've still got so much I feel like to give and um, you know, focusing so heavily on this week and the remainder of our season this year in particular. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice once we're through this, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, enjoy it. Congrats Thanks, to you and the family. I've got work to do, so I'm getting out of here. You've Thanks, asked, it. Thanks again for dropping in, mate. Already. One of the best special guests we've ever had, I reckon. No yeah. worries. Once again, yeah. I'll just Once take that cake on. with me. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep, keep it there. I might, I might just take, take care of it for a bit for you if you want. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Belly. But fun yeah. fact, now that he's gone, actually roomed with Pete on our first Woody trip. Oh, you should have brought that up. It would have been great. You're too, <laughs> too scared. Yeah. You must have been shocking. Oh, How old were you when you did that? Oh, uh, so I think it was my first year here, 2004. So I was 18 nine, or 19, sorry. Uh, and the only real memory I have of it is us kind of rocking in and me being a nervous, shy young fellow, rooming with the captain of the football club. Point Dexter. Yeah. He gave me a lot of local but, cash. A lot of Bart Simpsons. And said, go to the local market and buy me some kit. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> nah, serious. So I took the money I was like, oh. This, right. this, isn't, a, this isn't a training trip. This is a, this is a footy trip. So. This was an end of season footy trip. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, all right. And not the most fashion conscious bloke going around. I was like, oh, no, what do I, I do? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so I think I just bought him some like plain white, like linen shirts and a couple of pairs of shorts. And, and that's it. And he was happy enough. Was he happy? That? Yeah. Well, he must, must have been happy, mate. He's just giving you another year. So oh, there you been, go. Must have been pretty happy. I reckon I'm... I don't know if a 19 year old me could have held myself back from uh, really just going to town. If you tell you what, if you handed me a wad of cash and I had to get you some kit, mate, I, I, I don't reckon you'd forgive me. I reckon you'd be down low the on the list, mate. The Borat Mankini would be getting a run <laughs> for sure. I reckon I'd, I'd love that's something I'd love to Lounging see. Lounging around the pool, that'd be very it. good. So, footy trips, yeah, right, belly. Jeez. That was exciting. Good on, good on you for coming. Mm. Do you want a piece of cake? Or? Oh, oh, yeah, it's staring at me in the eyes. Go but on. I might have to wait till I'm off there. I'll get a little chocolate around. <laughs> anyway, um, where we were was. Um, probably not as exciting, but flying anyway. That's all right. Yeah. Let's just get back into that. How mm. do you how do you get into a flight from now on? Uh, to be honest, it's been a little bit relaxing this year. Yeah. As you mentioned, I've finished my study. I'm writing up a article to get published at the moment, but that's just a way whack, getting whack, whack the blue lights on, mate. Yeah. They do help actually. Yeah. Um, but that's a way of getting 
uh, reviewed at the moment. So I don't have anything active in that case. So right. I've just been reading um, and watching movies, talking to blokes. Yeah. Yeah. It's been pretty casual, to be honest. Not really. Though, nice. Do you? To be honest, I see I see at the pointy end of the plane, mate, and you just sit. Well, in, wait sit, till you go past. You sit, in your, you sit in your front corner, order your nuts, and you sit down and watch a movie. So, say whatever, you, say whatever you like. But well, I get on early, put the headphones on down on the iPad until you walk past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you go back into your. Yeah, seat. yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, now I know that you don't like. You obviously don't like talking about yourself. You're a very humble man, but there's got to be a few performances along the way that kind of stick out for you as a player. Does anything mm. jump out where you go, yeah, I reckon I had it on a string that day. Oh, uh, not really. There was one. There was one particular day where we all feasted. We all had a really good day. All the mids, in yeah. particular, down at Geelong. Yep, that's right. <clears throat> um, we had a really good win. Um, yeah, it was at Cadinia Park. Whatever they called it. Would, that you would stage. you would have been getting tagged that day, weren't you? Probably. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't can't recall. But yeah, 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 yeah probably. Yeah, yeah. But it was a day where myself, Nat, Mickey Barlow all had like. 40. It was that day Nat kicked that incredible goal, which is on every Fremantle highlights reel. I hate pumping him up. That's good. I uh, always say I don't like pumping him up, but I just end up always doing because that is easily one of the best goals. It was I've insane. Yeah. yeah. So but that's a good game that sticks out. Yeah. So we all had a stack of it. We all, um, Mick and Nat kicked, I think, three goals each. Lockie Neal was our fourth mid that day and had 28 and was filthy after the game. So. <laughs> didn't, didn't, want, didn't want the lucky 30. Yeah. So. But oh. yeah, the games like that, wins away in particular um, Obviously against games. hostile crowds yeah. are always really nice because it's like a, you're going away as a little family, as a little unit trying to get a job done. And, and when you can do that, sing a song in the away rooms and um, get the win, makes the flight home a bit nicer. Hard to come by four points quicker. away, aren't they? They are, yeah. Generally so. just, especially if you're traveling. 860,000 kilometers, it's probably yeah. adds to it. it, makes it a bit easier with the four points. But um, down to the stats, so 154 career goals, Great. it's pretty impressive. What's your biggest haul, do you know? Three, I think. Three, yeah. and that on top of 20, 28 and three or something? Oh, well, I did it against, um, it was against North this year, I kicked three, um, and I've, I've done it one, it one other time. So yeah, right. that day. But I think I did it against Collingwood. I would have thought you'd have more than three in to be honest. If, Nah. Chuck you down deep, I guess. Nah, yeah. set them up. I don't care. Can't jump. Yeah. Can't jump. Can't jump and take them off. Twenty one point two seven average career disposals. It's a fair bit. That's, yep. that's on a string. So that's obviously time in the midfield, off the half back. A lot of handball receives. Or... Yep. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, my career always, always been, distinct. Always been able to yeah. find the footy kind of thing. Oh, uh, not always. No, it's not easy. But um, always liked. Especially early days, I took kick-ins a lot. Yeah. And it was a bit harder back in those days because you actually had to kick yourself. Yeah, you can just step out the square like Luke Ryan does on every chance. Yeah, you sit yeah. in the top corner and take one step, make the kick. So Yeah. Do you so was, I've asked about your career highs. Do you remember any career lows? Yeah, I've had a few. What's um, the lowest? I reckon, I reckon I'll beat you here. <laughs> so I'm incredibly fortunate. I've never been dropped. Yeah. But I can... Re You've I, never been dropped? No, nah, never. No. Nah. I came incredibly close. You haven't close. lived, mate. <laughs> you haven't lived. Well, I came incredibly close on one particular occasion, which sticks in my mind, yeah. um, which is one of my lowlights. Um, it was after our heritage game against um, Sydney at the SCG, and mm. we're wearing an East Fremantle-inspired yeah, right. blue and white strip. Would have been a nice jumper. And it was a bit wet, and we got smashed, and I played horribly. I dropped like... Uh, my most vivid memory from that game is I dropped a chess mark kind of in the back 50, Oh. coming forward trying to take a chess mark and it slipped straight through and they kicked the goal straight away and Belly was the captain at the time and gave me the biggest spray I think I've ever <laughs> copped on field <laughs> oh, and cool. I was just like yeah sorry. I totally get it mate sorry, I'm so mate. sorry and I was like 20 like a pup I'm so sorry mate oh my god uh, and so I think um, and then so the next week was like oh willy won't he willy and I managed to hold on to my spot yeah right so. my other career low light which is a good one as well is um my first year here, playing for Subiaco um, in the Waffle that year, um, we had a game up north, a country game against Perth. Yeah, right. Uh, Peter German was our coach, and we were a pretty good side. Subi had um, made the grand final and lost in 2003. Yep. So 2004, we were a good so side. I was, I was just in pre-primary, but yep. 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 Go on. So we went up to up somewhere north and, and played Perth, as I said, and I played on Michael Johnson. He was sent a half forward, I was sent a half back, oh, and he geez. was at Fremantle as well. Yeah, right. We were drafted at the same time, like preseason draft. And he like had the game of his life, I'd like to say, but I he absolutely dominated me. 
And you've he's had, taking you've one had, hand you've had a stinker and, and it's selling just, me candy and kicking snags. It's so like, one-on-one back then as well defending, isn't it? Like, yeah, and I was just like, how do you – this bloke's Wayne Carey. How do you yeah. stop this fella? Anyway, after we got beaten by Perth, which happened a bit back in Subi's um, early days, even when they were really good and Perth were not so good. Yeah. Um, but we got back into the rooms and Peter German, like he often did, was going around and just singling blokes out. And he got to me and he was just like – the toned-down version of it was – I don't know why Fremantle even drafted you. Oh, mate. Geez. A few expletives in there. And so he went me pretty hard for yeah. and it felt like it was in a half hour spray, but like probably went me hard for like a minute. Thirty seconds. Thirty minute. seconds. Yeah. Uh but what he didn't know at that time was I'd gone back to Victoria that week for my grandfather's funeral. And so I'd flown back in the day before, then flown north and played this game. So oh. really poor prep, but got absolutely destroyed. Yeah. But he um did he end up following up after that or? Yeah, or not straight away. It wasn't yeah, yeah. his absolute strength. But a couple of years later, he was actually an assistant coach. A couple of years. Coach. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not your greatest strength, Crocky. He became an assistant late. coach here, yeah, a midfield right. assistant coach, when I was moving into the midfield. And um, off the back of our time at Subi, and then off the back of that, formed a pretty close relationship. Yeah, and yeah. he was up in um, Queensland last year when we were in camp. But I catch up with, like, we had our um, 10 year Subiaco reunion in yeah. 2014. And uh, like guys are still talking about that particular spray and a few oh, others really? that happened so, to other that, guys. It was, it was a, it's that, that memorable. Good. We asked yeah. um, Ryan Crowley about it, who was in our side of that yeah. back then, and he like remembers it to an absolute T. He loves it. So. <laughs> That's so good. It was good. a good one. Yeah. You, was that your only kind of big spray that you would have got then over the years? Oh, that was that was certainly my biggest, That's and it stands out as an absolute highlight. Uh, but there's always been you know some big sprays or some harder conversations and. Where not it be any once, probably. Yeah, it doesn't help. Spray for that. Yeah. So, and yeah, some of those ones are a bit meh, but yeah, yeah. Put them in the past anyway. Um, over your career, Dave, 175 wins, one draw, and 173 losses. What was the draw? Yeah, against Sydney at um, the SCG. Yeah, right. So, Michael Johnson had swung forward late. Yep. As, he, as he's, he's pretty good at that. He's he very good. At he that. knows how to, I've been in a game with him once, and he's won the game. Yeah. Doing that. So, he was, yeah. Um, back and then come forward, obviously, uh, for the last five minutes of the game. Yeah. Ended up having two shots of goal. I think he kicked a goal and then to put us maybe... Within one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, maybe within, within one. Or to draw it even. Because then he had another shot at goal from a similar spot but a bit further out. And Jeez. I think it didn't quite make the distance. Oh. Yeah, and Sam Reid marked it on the line or... Yeah. And I remember in the review, Zach Clark was our ruckman at that stage and he was... Down the ground footage yeah, was right. fairly damning on his positioning and things like that. Yeah, so. okay, crunch time, didn't get there. But um, they're weird walking off like on a draw because we probably felt like we should have won, so it's felt like a loss. They're the worst ones, yeah. yeah. You, would you almost prefer to kind of lose the draw or? No, nah, you always take nah, two points. Okay. But, all right, all right. Yeah, but that and Siren Gate, which we went over yeah, last yeah, week, the week before, is, um, yeah, we're two of the more weird, weird ones. Games, Spooky. Yeah. Um, yeah, 18th most games played in VFL, AFL history, it's probably probably under. It's like I would have thought you'd be close to the top 10 after the Freak 50. You know, isn't like, some blokes have gone around forever, haven't they? That's, yeah, well, it's that's heaps. still 18 out of 18 is how obviously, many. Yeah. Yeah. How many is it? Jeez. A lot. I, I can't do the maths on that one. But um, And if all goes well, you break Pav's record uh, for the Fremantle most games played in versus Saints. How do you are you pretty close with Pav? Does that kind of yep? Is that something that he's kind of deep down. I reckon <laughs> he's going to hate, or is uh, he going to be happy? Well, for he's you? got plenty of other records, so surely yeah, he's willing to give he's, me one. Yeah, he's, geez, he's got three <laughs> all Australians from different positions. Uh, yeah, no. Well, um, I felt more secure when we were in a hub, walking around the streets earlier in the year. So if we move into another on the back end of the year, won't be the worst result. Mm. I'm a bit worried that. Pav will just drive off the road if he sees me. But um, <laughs> no, no, we, yeah, I'm still really close with, with Pav and Lauren and, and their family and um, they're great people. So yeah, yeah, to be in a nice little moment um, at the end of the year. Yeah, right. Hopefully. Well, I'll swing it back to you now, mate, just for give you the floor kind of thing. It's obviously 350 games. Do you have anyone that you you want to thank along the along the way? Oh gosh, where do you who start? I know oh, who do you yeah. start? It's probably probably put you on the spot a bit, but now you have. That's parents, all right. Parents, massive. <clears throat> yeah, family. so obviously from the beginning, um, yeah, family, my entire family, we all were pretty close around the Seymour area um, yeah. and got together for any minor occasion. Who got who got you into footy before I just, just cut you off straight away? No, that's right. I actually remember... My podcast, mate, so my rules. Yeah, yeah, good on you. Yeah. Um, 
No, I actually remember coming home and, and talking to mum and dad about wanting to play footy, you know, when I was eight or nine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and in Seymour, we had two footy clubs, yep. the Seymour Lions and St. Mary's. Um, and the St. Mary's were kind of loosely affiliated, not really, but there was a St. Mary's um, primary school in Seymour, or mm. went up to U10 in yep. Seymour as well. So most of the St. Mary's kids went to place for St. Mary's. Most of the um, Grand Street primary school kids in Seymour went to Seymour. Anyway, so I don't know how exactly it happened, but I come home one day and I said, oh, mum, I want to play footy. All my mates are playing. And they're like, yep, great, no worries. We'll take you down to Seymour training, Seymour oh, Lions geez. training, no worries. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I want to play for St. Mary's because that's where a few of my best mates were going to play. And then so I was a bit like, oh, okay. So I ended up playing um, seven years with St. Mary's and won seven premierships and every second year we were undefeated. So it was not a bad decision. Jeez, it's a great, yeah. great choice then. Yeah. Lucky for your mates. Lucky your mates were there. Yeah. Seven. Seven players. Jeez. Jeez. It's real good. Yeah, it's nice. Anyway, um, moving on. Looking back at over career highlights, there's been a lot going on with the, the mop up top. Do you kind of remember the hair being long? You lo love it when it's long? Well, yeah. Um, or you hold, oh, you're I don't th really 36 care. now. You're kind of hold, holding on to it before you... <laughs> a little the bit. La the last shop. Going, trying to um, get on. No, I... Yeah, I don't really care about that, to be honest. I um, I don't know when, but many, many years ago, I actually, um, my hair was probably about the same length as, as it is now. And I went to get a haircut at a hairdresser. And anyway, so I was just like, oh, I don't know what I want. I just want it like it is, but shorter. And the lady was like, yeah, no worries. Anyway, cutting away, chatting away, no worries. And after, you know, however long, holds up the mirror at the back and goes, oh, what do you think? And it was... I was horrified. It was the worst haircut anyone's really? ever received. What'd she do to it? Oh, she just like cut everything around and left the top really long. So it was like a, I described it to my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time, as a, <laughs> a bowl cut. <laughs> no, as a mushroom. A, mush, um, <laughs> a muffin cut. Yeah. Oh, and I was just like, I was horrified. I was like, and, but I just went, yeah, yeah, thanks. thanks. Yeah. I went straight home. And do you reckon there's anyone, is there anyone in the world that, could actually look somebody in the eye and say, no, nah, I hate it. Yeah. Fix it. No, I, I couldn't. You never, you never can, yeah. Nah. So I went home and shaved it. And so then that started a few years of growing my hair long and then shaving it myself. Yeah, right. Uh, until... You just hate paying money for the barber, don't you? No, no. I was, I was too nervous. Even now, walking into a hairdresser, I'm oh, like really? cold sweats. I'm like, oh, geez, do a good job, please. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that um, grow hair long and shave it went until uh, I got married. And uh, my wife took me to a hairdresser in Dunsborough. Held your hand. Yeah, and she um, was very explicit with the um, lady. And she yeah. like, told her about my history and my phobia of hairdressers. And she was, um, yeah, so I ended up getting a really nice one. And then, so from now on, every time I go for a haircut, I pull up a wedding photo and re I'll just say, that. do it like that. Please, yeah. please don't stuff it up. That's one of the good memories, actually, going to a hairdresser and your mum kind of, not all, actually, for me, it was holding my hand, making sure I was, getting the right thing she's <laughs> mum, mum just mum's just never get it right but you got you got the missing so about, about your handy. motivation for choices the mankini and your mum having to make sure you make the right haircut choices yeah yeah well you know it's all right <laughs> um dave you obviously got another year minimum to go mm. um we touched on your post footy uh, out, outside of footy kind of um studies and how much you've achieved there is that something that you do end up kind of looking forward to post footy like what's the uh, yeah, possibly. I'm yeah. yeah, I'm still um not sure to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I'm so heavily I mean, invested. Barely, barely mentioned you're like another coach on the field, which you are. I mean, is yeah. that is that something that you've kind of a lot of you know, the fossil players kind yep. of end up playing how many many games and being great coaches? Is that something that you'd ever consider? I mean I'm putting you on the spot, but Yeah. Well, I'd certainly consider it. Yeah. yeah. Um in terms of yeah, what I wanna do, I I've no real idea to be honest. Mm. Um uh, I'm so heavily invested in what we're doing at the moment um, and so grounded in, in that, I guess, that, uh, and I mentioned before, like, this is still my dream. I still um, wake up and come in here and it's not hard to mm. do. So uh, I'm still loving what I'm doing at the moment and everything I'm doing outside of it uh, just to upskill me and, I guess, get a sense or a taste of, you know, possible pathways of what I want to do and whether that's down the marine or environmental science pathway or, yeah, we stay involved in football in some fashion, I'm not too sure. Yeah, because I get the feeling that I'm almost just a stepping stone kind of thing, like a step ladder, where it's just gonna. You've done a bit of radio, I've done a bit of commentary, yeah. And this is just gonna kickstart your media career. I mean, you've 
don't really. You've probably got more of a head for radio, but I mean, <laughs> we can we can move from there. Is that? Yeah, we just I mean, that is, is media something you do? Well, I'm glad you brought it up, but I'm really enjoying. I've been yeah, doing yeah. some commentary for ABC Radio um, in some different games. I've I've really enjoyed that. Yeah. So. Uh, doing a lot with Clint Wielden and Ben Cameron. So is it a different look on the game when you're kind of watching and actually commentating strictly as a as a kind of neutral commentator? Um, it is a little bit, yeah. The hardest thing I'm finding with it is not using our language to give an insight oh, really? into our ideas or philosophies around they how we want to play. They'd probably want that, wouldn't they? But, I mean, but you don't want well, to Well, and um, I feel like I've got a, a pretty good grasp of the game at the moment anyway, so... Um, yeah, I'm trying to give a really good insight without giving up anything too Fremantle orientated. Um, but yeah, it's it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it. And the last couple of years, I've been watching a lot more football than I had previously on the back of a bit more investment in that kind of thing. But also um, my second son, Hudson, loves footy and will watch, sit down and watch games with me all the time. Really? So, yeah, it's yeah, always good to have. So. so It's been good. So you've pretty much... I don't want to say wasted because education can never be wasted, but you've wasted your 10 year degree. You're just going to go straight into commentary, aren't you? No, no, no I don't think so. I, I'm still really, I, it really excites me that side of uh, yeah. my life um, and what I've learned through the marine science pathways and the people I've met in, in those fields and um, particularly at Murdoch University, the guys that uh, are kind of, you know, budding researchers there at the moment who've kind of come through at the same time as me are uh, doing some amazing work. So it's exciting. Oh, the oath, mate. It is, and it is impressive, so impressive how far you've, how much you've achieved off field with your studies. And um, yeah, it's something that, you know, a lot of people don't take for, don't take too lightly as into how hard it is to do that while you're obviously having such a illustrious career. So oh, that's geez, as much as a pump man. up as that's you'll nice. get, mate. Anyway, oh, um, in here. touch wood, you, you hardly ever get injured, mate. So yeah. how do you do it? Like, what is it? Only time you got injured really that I've seen while I've been with you is a bike mishap, which, I don't know. Oh, don't I, put it in I, comments, well, I don't know mate. the real story. Bike mishap's <laughs> a bit bit vague where you somehow crack your shin or whatever it was. But yeah. um, I, know, I always see you up in the ice baths. I mean, I obviously stay in for two minutes longer than you each time. But um, <laughs> how, how do you kind of get through? Yeah. You know, you mentioned when you're 18, 19, you can whack the legs up and not yep. have to get up for three hours. But now it's obviously, is it a pretty methodical kind of yep. process where you're like, right, I'm, I'm pretty sore. And then you got to move on or have you done it for? Yeah. So I guess early days, or oh, not early days, but I've, I've been incredibly lucky that I haven't had any big impact injuries, bones or joints or anything like that. Aside from the, the, the bike. Aside from the bike. I, don't, oh, I feel like you're um, bad, bad naming me by putting it in, in comments. Well, but before we go, what are you having there? I don't even know the full story. Yes, I was I was riding my bike with my uh, two boys down near Point Walter, yeah. and we're going at a pretty good clip down a bit of a hill. Yeah. And um, I was on reflection; I was too close in case something happened. But I was trying to stay close because we we're going quick. And anyway, speed wobbles. I was just trying oh. to take care of my boys. All right, we got I got bad <laughs> memories of getting the speed wobbles down a hill. To just yeah, lost. yeah. So anyway, what um, what happened is what it feels like always happened. The boys started racing each other fighting, pushing each other as they're riding. Yep. Huge stack right in front of me. And I had a split second decision of run my children over. Yes. Or swerve and avoid them. And so run the children over and make it 450. And so I've made the wrong choice to try to avoid my children yep. and let them survive. Um, and have just stacked it and come off my bike. And in that process, somehow like, Flipped over the handlebars or the bike some way, and yeah, so the outside of my ankle bone, just above my ankle bone, yeah, it's come back down on the main um, gear wheel at the front of your bike somehow. Oh, I would have loved to see. Anyway, so I cracked it, and it's like when you bang your knee or your ankles yeah. on like the coffee table or something. It's like, oh, that hurt. Well, you but imagine, you imagine a few few games of footy, you get yeah. a few whacks. Yeah, oh, it's just another whack. Like one of those ones you feel like you just rub it a bit and limp around for a Doesn't bit. Really work. And we're yeah. meeting some people down at Point Walter, some friends. And uh, it was bleeding fairly profusely and I wasn't aware and I was kind of limping over around. <laughs> and uh, my mate goes, oh, your ankle's bleeding quite heavily. And I was like, oh, gosh. So we got some paper from the toilets and, and I had a scan and there was a little crack in it. So <laughs> how good's that? <laughs> and then outside of that one and my synesmosis in 2011, yep. I've not been in. I think I've missed like an additional maybe two or three games with maybe a calf strain a couple of times. So it's Probably something you'd expect with someone... <laughs> You'd get easy ball, but you're probably more likely to get the hard ball than the easy ball, aren't you? You like getting in and under, so yeah. 
Yeah. Fair, fair point. But um, back to recovery. Is there anything else that like? Where's the special elixir of, of life that you're drinking yeah. from, mate? Well, fairly obviously with the young family, fairly active. And yeah. We're always out and about doing things, trying to occupy um, the children in our days off and things like that. So uh, I certainly think that that helps, in, particularly in the last couple of years um, and after games, because mm. you know what it's like, Griff. But after games, everyone's really sore and, and lethargic, and it's you know the easiest thing to do is to kind of sit down and just kind of wallow in it a bit, but. Yeah, to have an active family and an active lifestyle like that, I think has really helped. And um, as I mentioned before, one of my boys absolutely loves footy and loves going down and kicking the footy at the school oval. And Jeez. it's a it's a it's a big ask after a big game. Wake yeah, up, wake up the next day, sore ankle or whatever it is. Yeah, go and kick the footy. But yeah, so, yeah. So there's been like there's been numerous times where I've been at the oval kicking the footy with him, and in my mind it's like, oh, this is too many. I need to stop kicking. <laughs> So I'll start giving them big handballs because my leg's a bit sore. <laughs> Help me with a big red, um, red fist the next day. So. Yeah. But yeah, being active and like all the traditional things like ice baths and compression pants and mm. plenty of sleep and uh, stretching and things like that. Um, I wouldn't say I do anything outrageous or anything new or fandangled. No. I would just but say that what I do, I, I do diligently and, and do it well. Do it well. Yeah. Um, going back to uh, social media and you. Oh, yeah. Which we which we know, we know you love. Oh. Um, you're a social media sensation, mate. Believe it or not. Wow. So there's lots of all these trending Monday three hundred, Monday four hundred. We've always got there's a, there's a Benjamin Button thing that the, our lovely blokes. I always, saw that. That was put fantastic. Out. Yeah. I, I, I reckon that's great. I really enjoyed that. That's good. If there's one movie character, it's probably Benjamin Button. Man. <laughs> for you, unfortunately, I don't know what it is for me. I reckon it's something a bit nicer than Benjamin Button, but. Benjamin Button's not bad. I mean, mm. you got to be happy with that. Have you seen the movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brad Pitt, mate. Weapon. Yeah. He's a gun. Actually, uh, I feel a bit sad for ben, like Benjamin Button in the mm. movie. Because um, imagine having a baby and it was a little old fella. That's <laughs> weird. It's a weird concept. The more and more you think <laughs> about it. So, um, Back to you. We're going to go move on to which is saying it's your favorite segment. And I've uh, hijacked it. Oh, quick hands. Yeah. One of your favorites. So... Mate, just just looking for quick answers. Oh, Don't need anything just to <laughs> waffle on about. I've seen the uh, couple of Yeah, I'm just going to rattle, rattle off a few things. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, Last time you called your mum? Ooh, um, Sunday. Okay, nice. Your last meal on earth, what would it be? Uh, pesto chicken pasta. Really? You cook yourself? No. Nah. Nice. Pre-game routine? Anything that jumps out? Pesto chicken pasta the night oh, before really? home games. Uh, always a walk in the morning. Um, yeah, pretty casual. How do you emulate that at away games then for your pesto chicken pasta? Yeah, I have to forego it, unfortunately. That sucks, mate. I'm going to guess your signature juice then is pesto chicken pasta. If I had to cook it? Yeah. Nah. Oh, what is it? Oh, uh, no. I, I baked, don't do baked any beans on toast. In the moment. Yeah, ham and cheese toasties, maybe. You plan something you're not good at. It's good. <laughs> Coffee of choice, other than a free one? Uh, flat white. All right, nice. Um, how much do you bench? Uh, 115. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Your first car? A Brown VL Commodore, 1985. Nice. nice. It was a beauty. Real nice. Uh, we mentioned Benjamin Button in terms of movies. I'd actually like to know, is, what is your favorite movie? Oh, incredibly hard question. Yeah, I know. Let's go. Nah, just try, just try it. So what's something that if it if it's kind of comes on TV, you have to watch it. Well, movies I've watched millions of times. Yeah, millions, a lot. Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, uh, The Secret Window, which is a Johnny Depp movie. Um, mm. All right, favorite character, Lord of the Rings. Mm, Legolas. Yeah, it's good. Proud of you for that. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So obviously, watching movies, you need snacks. Favorite snack. Oh. You can indulge if you want. Yeah, I'm a peanut M&M man or oh, Grain Waves, yeah. Great, cool. See how Kramer Trials Grain Waves? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, most used emoji? Um, or do you just have a pager or something, whatever you... <laughs> Pages of emojis? No. Uh, winky face or the double hands high five? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Favourite guest so far on the podcast? Uh, oh, there's been a lot. Um, really enjoyed Josh Carr's chat. Yeah. Loaded question because who's the least favorite? Least. Sean Darcy. 
Yeah, big swaggy. Not sure about him. Um, NFL or AFL, if you had to choose which you had your 16, 18, 20 year career in, what would you choose? Oh, AFL. Mm. NFL is an amazing sport and I love it, but it's crazy what they do. You, you, it's, it's a bit of Brady, a bit of Brady, and you're just going on forever. So, yeah. Right, well done. It's not a bad segment, actually. Thanks, I like mate. it. Yeah. yeah. Might have to. Well, I think it's mine, mate. I think so I run can't a bit take better. it. Oh, well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, talked about kids in the fam. Yep. Looks like you're getting involved. You've seen uh, you were goal umpiring after a game a couple of weeks ago. How yep. are they looking? Is they a couple more undersized <laughs> key, key backs? Or? Yeah, we've got a couple in footy now. Finn's um, year three now, so he's playing little footy games. Yep. Uh, and Hudson's um, year one, so they're still in the Aussie kick program. Um, but. Yeah, they both enjoy it. Hudson loves it, mm. uh, but they both enjoy yeah their footy and um, getting around to home games when they can and getting in the rooms and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they love it. So any other sport, or are you just going to pigeonhole them just to footy? No, so they, they like doing yeah tennis and, and basketball and cricket. Um, did so mention, they can get their hands on. Did so. mention ac- active family. So yeah, yep. So there's a few things going on. And you're obviously an active active father. So when Finn's playing in the cold and wet, you still get out there with the with the coat. You, is that something you kind of, we've already said that you, you enjoy doing it, but is this is something you genuinely, genuinely kind of look forward to? Yeah. It would be exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I absolutely love it. I uh, am very fortunate to have come from a really involved, really loving family. And mm. so um, I've certainly had great ro- role models in that aspect of life. And yeah, when, when we can, when we're here, I absolutely love getting down to Finn's and Huddy Sport in particular. And um, yeah, Finn had a, a tough day on Sunday morning at Piara Waters Pavilion. It was uh, freezing cold and right. absolutely belting down rain and he's got no ounce of fat on him. He's a tiny little fella. And Give him some pesto chicken pasta. Yeah, no, he's, yeah, he, we need to feed him more, I reckon. But um, he was um, stationed at full forward and his team's, there's a bit of poli- politics involved, but his team's battling a bit this year. And yeah, right. So he's stationed at full four with not much action in they've, the first they've half. T- they've taken away the scoreboard for him, have they? And, and so he hasn't ugly. hasn't got much of the footy. He hasn't run around much. And yeah. So half time he's come off and his lips are literally blue. He's cr- shaking uncontrollably. Uh, I've ripped off my jumper and my jacket and put it around him, oh, given no. a big cuddle at half time. Like, you see, you'll be right, mate. You just got to keep going. You run around. You know, try your hardest. And uh, yeah, oh, I felt so sorry for him. It was such yeah. it was such a hard day for them all, um, all the kids. But so then Finn went into the midfield in the third quarter. His first contest, he got kicked in the leg, <laughs> dragging his leg around. <laughs> what a day for it! And I'm like, oh, and so I just called him off and sat on the bench with him again with my jumper and jacket around him and so cuddling him mate. for the whole third quarter. Yeah. Talking to him, they just had their cross country at the end of last term, and he did like, pretty well in that. So I was just talking to him about how well he did in his cross country and how much of a great runner he is. And when he gets back on, he just needs to run around and get warm and he'll be fine. So I went back on in the last quarter and he did that and he got a bit of the and footy he and oh, he really enjoyed came it. Came with fresh legs, so that's good. And come off and we had a huge Milo, warm while I for him to smash down, warm him oh, back bugger. up. So, Jeez. No, it was, I think yeah, it's it been day. one time, it was in my draft year, same thing. I was pretty gangly, pretty skinny. And as myself and um, Tony Knott is also nice and gangly and skinny is a place for Swan District. Yep. Um, and it was a freezing cold day. Like it was, <laughs> it was cold. Like yeah. and we, myself and Tony were down deep in the back lines, the same thing, not much movement, but we both came off and we had kind of actually had the shakes and I was like, Whoa, I'm actually, <laughs> I could be a bit. I could be in a bit of strife here, so we both kind of jumped in. Remember jumping in the bath with him together? We're both <laughs> two two men just kind of sitting while I was still a pretty young boy, but I was just calling up to Tony, not just going, "Oh, geez, it's pretty cold, mate." <laughs> it's no good, is it? Very good playing in the cold, no, but yeah. seeing um, LeBron James close to playing with his son Bronny James is that is that a chance that you could hang around for long <laughs> enough to don the yeah? Don well, it'll be him? up to the great man we had on before, I yeah, guess, but. Uh, Finn's eight, so he's still a few years away. Yeah. Um, moving on to the weekend, fixture change, mm. push to Sunday, and yeah, how are you feeling? Yeah, so it's obviously been a bit of a upheaval for you know, everyone involved, but on a free mental, in a free mental perspective, it's been yeah, fairly big upheaval for all of us. Mm. So um, yeah, really enthusiastic about cracking back in. I think um, you know the weekend's game was you know, really poor and unfortunate, but. Yeah. Hopefully our behavior, our behavior and actions and endeavor in the next few weeks will prove that to be just a little blip on the radar and, and we'll be okay. But we had a really great game against Sydney earlier in the year and 
I think we um, match up really well with them for another great game. So yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. It's back in games in Queensland as well. So nice, maybe some hotter weather. We're talking about the colds. So. Yeah, back at Metricon, which would be good. So um, we like it there. It's good. Yeah, we're up there a bit last year, weren't we? So um, yeah, be a nice one. Obviously, is a, a milestone game as well. Blake Hakers' hundredth AFL game. Mm. So that's that's something to look forward to to really play for someone we love and get around. So. What's really what is the true milestone of the boys? Hundred three fifty well, a day. We'll see who gets we'll cheered off. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's actually not bad. <laughs> you got me there. That's good. Well done. Well done. Oh. That's oh, I might have to take Blake off them just for that. <laughs> that is yeah, it's got me. Thanks. Um, what do we do at like pyramid style gymnastics? Me on top of someone and Blake on top of me, or vice versa. Yeah. Yep. No, maybe not, mate. <laughs> you can't even handle a bike ride without really cracking your shin, so let's just leave it at gymnastics to a bare minimum. Um, yep, so as you mentioned, Sydney, we do match up well. Maybe mm. maybe some of us don't match up too well on other blokes who like to kick goals, so hopefully Moose might take Buddy this week, I reckon. Well, I was going to ask you that. He's, what is he, 19 away now from 1,000? Yeah. So how many does he have to kick on you before He's you every give chance. him the Moose? Look, 19, I've, I've seen him kick 13 in, <laughs> in an extraordinary... That was insane. It's a good, it's a pretty good result not to play him when he's. Oh, I don't want to jinx it, but oh, I don't think he can kick nineteen this week. Yeah, so, we're not doing our job. Well. Yeah. Any publicity is good publicity. At the end of the day, it'd, it'd be an honour for a man to kick his seventh goal on me, but right, it won't be happening this week. So mark my words. So say he was only two or three away. Yeah, and he kicks his thousandth goal. Yeah, and at the time you are manned up on him. Yeah, you whiteboard markers, uh, magnets are together. Yeah, he kicks that goal. <laughs> Are you standing next to him or are you handing over for Moose? Because there's obviously going to be camera time for him. If he kicks that goal, I reckon it's like a – obviously not with COVID. They're not going to – they wouldn't let people storm the crowd, but I'd be getting around him saying, well done. <laughs> like, defensive, defensive. So not just stand, stand, stand defense, next defense, to him. Defensive, yeah, if we're, five him. we're winning or losing. Like, bro shaking. If, if we're winning, then I'm getting around him going, mate, well done. That's awesome. And Moose. if we're losing? If we're losing, then I'm – yeah, I'm handing over the Moose. Down. Give, him, give him to Lukey, anyone. I'll give him to – Will it was ever down there, but nah, yeah, probably handing him over then okay. at that stage. Still celebrate, great athlete. I love seeing him. Oh, he's a phenomenal athlete. Um, yeah, uh, chance to keep him under six, do you reckon? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, nah, just do whatever the team needs, mate. You know, you know, the, you know the drill. So that'd be nice. Yeah. Um, anyway, bit of a different kind of episode, mate. I did take the reins, and I mean. I reckon the ratings will probably go bananas seeing me take it over. Well, you've but, done well, mate. I'm very proud uh, of you. Thank you. And um, oh, I just love to love. It's a privilege to be a part of your career so far, Dave, and obviously another couple of years to go and uh, minimum. And yeah, 350 games is an, is an awesome, awesome achievement, mate. And it's uh, something that obviously people dream of doing. So thanks again. And we're off to Queensland. Happy birthday, mate. Enjoy the cake. I've now you've been on and off and... Hold on, mate. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.